I'm an African. I'm an African who happens to be gay. Being gay is not easy, especially if you live on the African continent. Today, I would like to take you on a journey, a journey of pain, hatred, sorrow, and suffering that most, that most of my fellow African brothers and sisters have to endure. At the same time, I would like to take you on a journey, a journey of love, of hope, of aspirations realized. Homosexuality is illegal in 38 African countries and homophobia has reached dangerous levels in Africa. In most of these countries, homosexuals are either arrested, detained, and sentenced to prison by a judge simply because they happen to be gay. These include countries such as Nigeria, Burundi, Malawi, Uganda. It's either they've toughened up gay laws or have uh, uh, imposed further restrictions against homosexuals. And the rhetoric is the same. It comes from most of the African leaders, such as President Robert Mugabe, who once said in 2011, gays are worse than pigs and dogs. And recently, Gambian president, he said at the General Assembly of the United Nations in September that uh, homosexuals are a threat to human existence. The common theme is the same throughout. Homosexuality comes from the West, therefore, it is an African. Never mind that homosexuality was practiced for thousands of years in Africa until the age of colonization. The only gift which, which, which comes from the West is the gift of homophobia. South Africa was once a victim of these heinous gay laws. In 1872, sodomy was described as a common law crime in South Africa. Pre-1994, during apartheid, homosexuals were a sentence up to seven years in prison. I'm inspired by an African leader, Af uh, gay rights activist and political activist, Simon Goli, who once said, I am black and I'm gay. In South Africa, I'm oppressed because I'm black. And I'm also oppressed because I'm gay. So when I fight for my freedom, I fight against both oppressions, close quote. In post-apartheid South Africa, when the African National Congress came to power, South Africa became the first nation in the world to have uh, gay and lesbian rights enshrined in the constitution, where it offered protection of that, and stated uh, about the pro prohibition of discrimination based on sexual orientation. President Thabo Mbeki in 2012 once made a comment about the gay laws which were passed in Uganda and said, sexual preferences are a private matter. I do not think it is, state, it is a matter of the state to intervene. What two consenting adults do is really not a matter of law. Sadly, we have these gay laws in South Africa, but uh, Tapelo Makutle, a 23-year-old, was brutally murdered from the, Western, from the Northern Cape simply because he was gay. His throat was slit and his genitalia was stuffed in his mouth. Another hate crime victim is Zoliswa Ngonyani. She was gang raped and also stoned just because she's a lesbian. As many as 10 lesbians are raped or gang raped in South Africa and are victims of corrective rape. Most of these victims are afraid to actually go out to the police because of fear of victimization. Imagine, imagine an Africa where African leaders would stop raiding people's bedrooms. Imagine, imagine an Africa where people would not be discriminated simply based on, on who they love. Imagine an Africa where corrective rape of lesbians would cease to exist. 
Imagine an Africa where people are not discriminated upon using the Bible, religion, uh, as a form of hatred for gays and lesbians. Imagine an Africa where two men or women can walk freely in public without the fear of being discriminated or victimized. Well, it may sound like a pipe dream, but it is possible. I would like to tell you about a story, a story of two African men who are in love. That is my spouse, Toba, and myself. Well, our journey began a couple of years ago. We met in the majestic city uh, of Durban while I was still a student. Well, we exchanged numbers and contacts. Um, fine enough, we actually lost contact with each other. And then he moved up to Johannesburg, and then we were rekindled again, and then we actually hooked up. And I remember, actually, I was at gym, and I saw him there. I thought, oh my goodness, this tall, dark, and handsome guy. <laughs> he looks so vaguely familiar. And I went up to him, and like, voila, you know, it was, it was Toba, and um, you know, to cut the long story short, uh, we became gym partners, and uh, we sp started spending a lot of time together. And then from there, we actually became lovers. Um, our love grew so much that uh, we actually, I proposed to him last year in June 2012. And we were faced with the task of actually communicating our decision to, to our parents. Our parents were very supportive, that is both sides, uh, the Sotole family and also the Modisane family. And we were so blessed by that, and we also wanted that blessing. Um, and we had planned to have the wedding in KZN. But the challenge was that, you know, our current president, Jacob Zuma, he once made a comment and said, when I was growing up, and Ungangili, which is a gay person, would not have stood in front of me, I would have knocked him out. So we were faced with a challenge, you know, having to get married in rural KZN, homophobia is rife there. But then we thought to ourselves, you know what, our constitution actually allow, allows this for, to happen, therefore we'll do it. We actually distributed our, our invites to some, of, to, to some of our friends in, in KZN, um, and also Joburg as well, and somehow the media just got excited about this, having the first traditional wedding in Kwadugusa. You know, um, this has never been done before. And you know, we're just happy to indulge them as a form of education and protest as well. Um, since we're gonna have a traditional wedding, you know, in African culture, there needs to be a spilling of blood. A bull needs to be slaughtered if two people are gonna get married. That is to merge the Sutole and the Murisane families. So I had to go scout for a bull, <laughs> first time ever. And then after that, I had to slaughter the bull as well with, with the assistance from the elders. It was quite fun, first time doing that. And also we planned to do it to, to get married wearing our traditional regala, which is the Sitswana, because I'm Tswana, and Toba is Zulu. Some of our friends were like, Cameron, why are you doing this? Are you guys crazy? You know, uh, most of them, they're in the closet, you know, we thought to ourselves, you know what, we want to remove the stigma of being gay. The, this whole thing of being gay is wrong, it's an African, it's in, in, in all those things. So we set up a blog just to communicate our marriage, just to show about, about our love and relationship and just to inspire people as well. This is our blog, we call it the Toba and, and uh, Tepo and Toba Sole Murisane Journey of Love. So the wedding actually happened in uh, KZN. Now I'm gonna show you a video of the wedding. Enjoy it. There were ululations all round. As the men of the moment, Toba Sitole and Cameron Mudasane made their grand entrance. Both dressed in traditional regalia to show their Zulu and Sitswana roots. Then the moment guests had been waiting for. There's been a lot of criticism to Sitole and Mudesane tying the knot, but the grooms say they're proud of making history. 
You know, I love Toba so much. I'm very excited. I'm glad that I'm married to, to Toba now. We are both uh, Mr. TC Tola Morisa, and it's very exciting. We're making history. You know, I think, as I've mentioned before, uh, it is against this idea that being gay is an African. Being gay is, is as African as being black. So we're part of our culture, Toba Zulu and Amtoana, and uh, we are rooted in our culture, and we're very excited about it. Sticking to tradition, the groom's families exchange gifts in the traditional umabo. The couple have already slaughtered a cow introducing themselves to their respective ancestors and asking for blessings. This also formalized their three-year relationship. You know, you know, I must say, there's this picture she's been doing around, especially on the net, newspapers. I remember in KZN, everyone was flabbergasted with this kissing. You know, two guys kissing and, yeah, it was something unheard of. But we, are, we wanted to show our love. You know, I remember even the Daily Sun had a story written about us. I think what you achieved was the fact that you got married as two black men in, on African soil, in KZN, a homophobic place, and also the fact that we were wearing our traditional regalia, and also the fact that we got married near to Shaka's grave, grave in Stanger. Um, you know, my final thoughts around, around same-sex marriage, I think it's, a, it's about the evolution of mankind. You know, things have changed. You know, previously women were not allowed to be in corporate, but now women are in corporate. Same thing as gay marriages as well. Toba and I are planning to build a family. We love each other so much. We're planning to, to have kids as well. Um, hoping to get a surrogate mother who's gonna assist us to get a bundle of joy which is gonna make us happy and our child's gonna grow up in a loving, happy family with two dads. Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, I refuse to go to a homophobic heaven. I would not worship a God who's homophobic. And that is how deeply I feel about this. Homophobia is close cousins to racism and we need to root it out in the strongest possible terms. Toba and I, we love each other so much. We are African, we are gay, and being gay is as African as being black. Thank you.